Feminist Fridays is brought to you by Filipino Free Thinkers, the Women's Global Network for Reproductive Rights, WGNRR. It's in, it's in partnership with the Sanctuary Project, UNFPA, SCAP, She Decides, and Cyan, and is supported by the Global Fund for Women. Welcome to Feminist Fridays. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Feminist Fridays. Uh, this is a series of workshops to tackle different feminist issues so you, that you can decide which one you want to pursue. So today we have Shabana al Kasir to talk about the different kinds of uh, the history of feminism and Sabrina Gakad to talk about the different kinds of feminism. Feminist Fridays is brought to you by Filipino Freethinkers, WGNRR, and in partnership with the Sanctuary Project. So for today, Shif Belonga is here to talk about WGNRR's partnership with us. Um, I'll just introduce um, WGNRR very quickly. So uh, the Women's Global Network for Productive Rights is a global network that connects and strengthens movements for sexual and health rights, or SRHR, and justice. Our work is grounded in the realities of those who lack um, economic, social, and political power. Through critical analysis and strategic actions, we connect members and partners and allies, build knowledge, organize campaigns, and share resources. Our key objectives are to coordinate and strengthen national and regional networks of SRHR organizations, initiating activities that ensure that all women and girls are able to exercise their right to make free and informed decisions regarding their SRHR. Of course, you cannot speak of SRHR without speaking of feminism because we have the activism of the global women's movement to thank for leading the way for us, um, particular to SRHR for shifting the conversation from population control and um, family planning to the rights frameworks we have now. Feminism remains vital in our work to advocate for women's rights, destroy culture, improve representation in all areas, challenge barriers to achieving gender equality, among others. We now have legislations on anti-rape, anti-sexual harassment, um, and of course, the Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Law. We benefit from the gains of the past, and we have the responsibility to join in the struggles and advocacies of the present. Uh, taking our cues from history, WGNRR wants to do its part in enlarging feminist spaces in our country. We believe in the potential of these spaces to elevate discourse and to demand genuine fulfillment of rights of women and girls in all their diversity. At the same time, we want to make sure that our discussions here do not remain uh, lofty and intellectual, but that we are able to carve out a path for everyone to be able to participate in advocacy spaces and work in partnership with women of varying and intersecting vulnerabilities and contexts. So on behalf of WGNRR, um, I'd like to thank the Filipino Free Thinkers for organizing this activity with us. Uh, I'd, I'd like to thank everyone for coming and I hope we all have a productive workshop session today. Sure, Tin. Hi everyone, welcome again to the first um, episode of Feminist Fridays. So today we are joined by two of our feminist comrades and colleagues um, starting with Sabrina Gachad or Ina. So Ina is presently an assistant professor at the Department of Women and Development Studies at the College of Social Work and Community Development in UP Diliman. She also maintains a meditative movement practice that includes yoga and dance improvisation. Ina was an Australia Awards scholar and received a Master of Economics from the University of Sydney in 2019. Ina also founded the Lunas Collective, which some of you may be familiar with. So Lunas is a feminist, inclusive, volunteer-powered chat service offering a safe online space for all people who are seeking support related to gender-based violence and reproductive health. Hi, Ina. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Hello. So, sorry, 
so uh, to our audience, Ina will be telling us, uh, uh, will be sharing with us uh, her insights on the different kinds of feminism, the different feminisms. So thank you again so much, Ina, for joining us this afternoon. So we are also joined by our second um, speaker for this afternoon who will be talking to us about the history of feminism. Her name is Shabana al Kasir or Bans. She is a graduate student of the Department of Women and Development of the UP CSWCD. She's currently the program manager for the UP Center for Women's and Gender Studies Oxfam Research Project on SRHR and a gender reform consultant under the Asia Foundation's Coalitions for Change. She is a co-founder of the Young Feminists Collective, a community and active platform for advocacy and collaboration on feminist issues. So welcome, Vance, and thank you for joining us this afternoon. All right. So let's start with um, the whole reason for why I'm here. And so we will be looking at the different kinds of feminism. So very deliberate yung paglalagay ng S dun sa dulo. And what I want to do is look at some of the theories. We will start with the idea of power and what that has to do with gender and what that has to do with feminism. And then go into the different feminism and hopefully I will be able to help you figure out which of these feminisms would best fit for you. So yeah, so if we go into the next slide, thanks in for facilitating. Yeah, so what we have is power, oppression, and liberation. I wanted to start with how feminism is about power. And the power that we want to explore in this case is the power that is created um, and the resistance to the power around these levels of expressions of power on the basis of gender. So ito yung, this is what we mean when we talk about gender power relations. To be more concrete, it's about the relationship of dominance and subordination around gender and sexuality on an individual level, on an institutional level, on a more, um, on a bigger scale, on a society-wide scale. So what we want to also explore is, or what I want you to be thinking at the back of your head, is how gender power relations, the relationship of dominance and subordination, how that intersects with other relationships of dominance and subordination. And just to be clear, because we'll be talking about what, where the power comes from, what it is, how it's wielded, and what for. So I wanted to demonstrate that my power is, I'm speaking, all the rest of you are muted. You can contribute to the discussion through the chat, and I'm able to read the chat so I can follow the questions there. Um, there are other ways that you might be able to comment also on the discussion, including Facebook. So that's your power. But relative to mine, I control the space. You're seeing my face. You're hearing my voice. So that's the kumbaga, unequal level of power relations that we have right now. And then, what do I want to do with my power? What I want to do with my power is help people who are here and who might be doing this later understand what feminism is, the different aspects of feminism, the different feminisms, and hopefully help you facilitate your understanding of where your feminism, where your own brand of feminism lies. And my intention for doing this is very simple. Parang, I feel like everyone's a feminist at heart. Um, it's, it's a scary label, the F word. It's scary and not all of us are ready to come to the table and say, I'm a feminist. So that's fine. We're all at different parts of our journey. But I do want us to realize this side of us that seeks some form of um, 
restructuring of the power relations around gender. Because that's the way we can create a more equal society. And of course, I'm also doing this because I want to have more comrades, more friends, more connections, more people to share the whole effort of trying to change the unfair gender relations that our society is also pinned on. So yun, clear yung intentions ko. Um, and that's what we mean when, when we talk about power. Like, what do we exercise power for? Um, where it comes from is what we'll be looking at. So, okay, and then the theoretical aspect of power, just to throw this in, I'm not going to belabor the point. Uh, what we want to recognize is it's a multiplicity of force relations and power constitutes its own organization, which means that when you implement power, when you exercise power, you have the intention to do it towards something. And by doing that, you've organized where you want your power to go. The second element of power is also the response of the people who are receiving your power. So power, in this case, and I really want to emphasize this, it's not unidirectional. There is power in um, affirming the power that is existing around us. There is also power in resisting that same kind of um, situation. So, yes. And then lastly, of course, there are strategies that help in tearing the structures of power apart. There are strategies that support these structures. So, what does that have to do with oppression? Simply lang yung oppression and just throw in questions if there are any so far. Wala. Yeah. And oppression, imposition of unjust constraints on the freedom of individuals or groups. So we want to think about oppression as just a cage and you're in the center of it and you've got all these barriers that prevent you from moving out. So one line of the cage is not going to stop you from getting out of your cage. But if you had 10 and then it was barricaded at the bottom and the top, there's no way out. And that kind of system of um, restrictions that work together is what oppression is. And then finally, liberation in this context, especially in the context of feminism, is the effort towards removing the barriers, removing, taking down, breaking down that cage. It is also this ideal. Um, so it's both an ideal and the process, and that's what we want to explore. So yun yung lalaman ng ating discussion. And from here, what I will do is look into a couple of statements. Uh, more than a couple. Um, um, more than a handful of statements that will tell us all these different feminisms. And what I want you to do, if you can, is make comments to chat. Let me know which of these statements resonate very strongly with you. And then at the end of all these statements, I will give you a summary of these feminisms and hopefully let you explore your own. So, sige, let's go into the next slide. In the next slide, here I ask you, who among us believe strongly that women are as capable as men and deserve equal opportunities and rights? So, the important point here is the idea of capability. Now, there actually isn't any difference between men and women capabilities, except that we're not able to see that they are actually as capable or women are as capable as men because for the longest time, opportunities and rights have been skewed and have prioritized men more. And this is the strand of liberal feminism. So, so far, walang nag-chat na this resonates very strongly with them. Okay. okay, so let's move on to the next one. Again, someone said strongly agree pala. Great. Um, do you want to do, and if people want to explain why, yes, please do so I can see the why, uh, the chat. Okay, great. Nagilito ako may screen, may chat, may notes. Okay, let's do this. Okay, the next feminism. I patriarchy and biology has condemned have condemned women to oppression. See the typo. Um, same here as the first statement. So, ito naman is the radical feminist perspective. So, patriarchy originally is a term from anthropology that 
to know the leadership or the control or the authority of men. And it, by extension, uh, patriarchy is a society or is a system of the society that grants more power to the men and that includes controlling resources, controlling women's bodies and choices. So see, biology plays into this discussion because of the fact that women biologically are able or biologically female people because we have to make that distinction now. And it's important to recognize that not all women are biologically female. So biologically female people are able to conceive, are able to bear babies, bear children. And this whole set of actions, raising children, pag-aalaga, pag pag pagpapakain kay baby, papaaralin niyan, etc. It created the requirement for women to become mothers. And so yung biology na ito, it is seen as the main reason for why women now are oppressed. Kasi ito yung main role of women in society. And that's one of the aspects of radical feminism naman. And exactly, kasi man said na by basis of their biology, women's biology, and the roles that are associated with this kind of biology and ability, mas weak na yun yung mga kababaihan. And we all know that's not true. But some people still do believe that. So that's our radical feminism. Next slide. So yung next slide natin will talk about how women are members of the working class exploited by a capitalist system of production. So still waiting for people to say they agree with this. And the idea here of Marxist feminists is that women are workers too. And the exploitation and the abuse and the oppression that women are experiencing, I, they're all by virtue of them being workers. So, bahagi ng pagtatrabaho, bahagi ng na-alienate sa produkto ng mga kababaihan because someone else owns the factors of production and they are just merely given um, wages that are not equivalent to their contribution or not equivalent to the value of what they produce and also not equivalent to the requirement to live a good life, therefore exploited by a capitalist system of production. Yes. So, isa pang aspect ito ng feminism na pagkilala sa mga kababaihan bilang bahagi ng uring manggagawa. So our next slide goes into capitalism and patriarchy reinforcing each other to oppress women. Yeah. So this where this is the Marxist feminism perspective. And the one on your screen right now is the socialist feminist perspective. So remember, si feminism and Vance will talk about this too. It was a response to everything that was happening in society when people started asking for civil liberties and people started demanding rights and people started telling us well this is what's wrong so we can ch change society in a democratic process etc ganun din yung um parang process of creating the feminism that we know so nauna si radical feminism si liberal feminism um and then radical feminism and then marxist feminism and then dumating si socialist feminism to say wait hang on it's not either or it's not biology versus capitalism. It's actually both. And it's a system of capitalism and patriarchy reinforcing each other comes into the form of, well, let's take a look at who owns private property in a capitalist system. Who has the right to control wealth? Diba? And if the objective was to keep wealth in the family, the woman's role becomes provide an offspring na magmamana ng kayamanan para yung wealth hindi ma-distribute. So that capitalism and patriarchy working together. Also, on the other hand, and if we wanted a more parang grounded to our day ngayon, uh, patriarchy showing na women still have to do the work at home even if women are going out to earn a living at very low wages. So that's capitalism and patriarchy imposing a double burden on women. And 
again, using women's bodies, using women's um, contributions to family and society as a means to oppress. Yeah, so that's socialist feminism. Um, don't worry, meron tayong one big slide that summarizes everything. So yes, and definitely yes, yes, yes. Okay, at may naka, may naka feel. I'm guessing yun yung sa double burden. Okay. And I, someone agrees also that capitalism will not work without the next slide. Now brings us to um, the next slide goes into race and ethnicity as being random factors. They are as random as sex and yet they have both been used by colonizers to dominate and control women. So in this case, what we want to do, make question, we'll go back to that in a bit um, about Marxist feminism, but the short answer is yes. So now we go into um, third world feminism that looks at how our societies have been organized or our countries have been colonized so that our colonizers can benefit from our land and our labor. And then we can become the market for their production. And then they implement controls in our political systems. They implement incentives so that our political and socioeconomic systems are oriented towards global trade, etc. So the idea here is race and ethnicity, your location on the globe, there are as random as sex, diba? It was a matter of lottery. Swertihan lang. Pero it has been used by colonizers to benefit themselves from race and ethnicity, proving that one race is superior, um, our colonizers as white Anglo-Saxon men, and then using women from the developing countries, from the colonies, as their slaves, as their prostitutes, as their um, every all-around worker at home. So, yun, yun yung aspect naman of third world feminism. And the idea here, we will see towards the summary slide is how we might be able to move away from this kind of inequality. So, yes. Yeah. So, yung next slide natin. So, we have two more slides. And yung next slide natin, we'll talk about what defines a woman. And the belief is of postmodern feminists is that what defines a woman goes beyond the ex oppression they experience. So, if you notice, dun sa mga nakaraan nating slides, women, very specific, yung oppression. So, ngayon, when postmodern or argue that there is more to being a woman than just the oppression that we experience. When I said it's morbid, na parang just to think na, are we all just unified then because we are experiencing oppression? Can we not be unified on the basis of something else? And this is where the postmodern feminists argue about identity. So identities are how people associate themselves, how people express themselves, and how society re receives them. So it's identity two way. And then beyond that, there are hegemonic identities. Yung identities na naka-embed na dito yung relationships of dominance and superiority and inferiority. So people would have to subscribe one direction to avoid oppression. But at the same time, may iba-ibang forms, again, factors that will affect the different identities. So, in that sense, yung construction mo ngayon of what becomes a woman also has to be rooted in the identity of the woman identity. And then this is where we start seeing na, oh, hang on, there are different ways to define it. And some of the ways to define it also lie in pleasure, also lie in sexuality that goes beyond biology. It goes beyond ability to... Um, learn or ability to work, it goes beyond the oppression that are from a capitalist system, the value of your work. So, yun yung contribution ng money, postmodern feminism. Yeah. And then finally, the last kind of feminism I wanted to pre present 
is a feminism that recognizes that the interplay of gender and other social categories on which discrimination is based amplifies gender-based discrimination. And this is what we call intersectional feminism. And this is the, one of the more recent ones. So, and you'll notice here, naka, a recognition na natin of power relations is not just between men and women, it's about gender. So, let's see. Let's just break down bits and pieces of this. Other social categories. Other social categories refer to wealth. It refers to race. Katulad nung nabanggit with uh, third world feminism, there's race. Um, and then other social categories include completion of education. So, nag-college ka ba or hindi? Um, ability, yes. So, pasok siya doon. And the idea with intersectional feminism is to, we need to recognize na kapag remember the page at the start. So we have one dimension of the page talking about gender. We have another dimension of the page talking about education. And then another dimension talking about race. And then another dimension talking about ability. So kung sa lahat ng dimensions na ito, nandun sa, sa space na nag occupy ka ng inferior interior kind of category, talong-talo ka na. And so, the point of intersectionality is, pag pinagsama-sama mo lahat ng oppressions na to, wala ka nang kawala from the cage. And that is different from the oppression that will be experienced by another person whose cage might be bound by two or three bars. Diba? So, yun yung idea of intersectional feminism. And yes, yeah, someone says, um, exclamation points, marami, and it's a bit complicated, I agree. Um, but I think, and let's move into the last slide for this segment. Um, yeah, so if we go into the last, ay, hindi, meron pa palang power oppression and liberation. One more slide of this. So I'm scanning the reaction, um, and I am wondering. If kanina sabi natin sa power, um, oppression, and liberation, we have to recognize the intention for wielding power. And we also have to recognize the moments when we resist or when we support this power. So that means that for each person, it's different. And this brings us to the point that is also directly linked to intersectional feminism. Itong reasons ng bawat isa sa atin to support a certain form of expression of power or resist it, also is based on our, the categories we occupy in society, the categories that we identify ourselves with. And pag kaya membership natin, loosely um, put, sa isang category, sa isang socioeconomic category, ay nakakabuti sa atin, this is what is called privilege. So, in this case, what we want to see or what I want you to reflect on, just throw it in there, is that your privilege allows you certain benefits that are not experienced by people who don't belong to that same category. What does this have to do with feminism? Again, the idea that, well, all relations of power have one dominant side and one inferior side, and recognizing that there are ways to use our privilege to shift the balance. Run. So let's summarize everything. I think I have time for the man. I left fairly quickly. Okay, I'm scanning the comments. Yeah, backwards of oppression, capitalism, co opting the narrative of women's liberation to identity politics. Oh my god, I get my tanong. Ah, sige. So we summarize natin sa dito sa final um, summary slide. So, yeah. So, we should now see the slide that talks about um, the different feminist strands that I presented to you, and then the sources of oppression according to these different feminist strands, and then their strategies for liberation. So like I said, liberal feminism is all about recognizing that women can be as rational as men. Women can be as capable as, as men, but we were never given the opportunity to prove that. So you first, our society, governments, have to first provide us equal opportunity. There should be no discrimination based on sex 
or gender. So yung addition natin ng gender is fairly recent. Um, radical feminism, I just wanted to point this out very important. Biology, love it or leave it. What does that mean? So biology, your body, your experience of your sexuality is either a curse or such a huge pleasure that you want to um, leave or, or immerse yourself in it. Yung leave it part is the trend of radical feminism that says, I will defy or women should defy their biology, meaning they shouldn't have children or um, women should defy the, or sh women should resist by holding relationships only with other women. Because men use women's bodies for their pleasure and not for women's pleasure, which is also um, the starting point for gender-based violence. I should throw that in here before I forget. Because radical feminism didn't start the idea of gender-based violence or violence against women. Because patriarchy controls women's bodies and the ultimate expression of control, especially when there's so much resistance, is to use violence so that the resistance ends. Yeah. So, and then Marxist feminism, yes, it's the one that talks about how women are part of the workforce and are part, and their um, labor power is used by capitalists to gain a lot of profit, and this is exploitation. Yeah. Um, and then socialist feminism now brings patriarchy and capitalism together. That it's, they can't live without each other and they do dually oppress women. Um, yep. And then what um, socialist feminism's approach to liberation would be ngayon, autonomous women's organizations and reproductive freedom. The recognition that women, some women might want to have children, some women might not. But it's a personal choice in that sense. And women should be able to choose when, where, how many, and in what manner they would have children if they want to. So that's reproductive freedom. And then post-colonial feminism or third world feminism naman looks into how women, in order to be free from the structures of oppression, they have to contribute in the nationalist struggles to liberate countries, people from colonizers. And postmodern feminism, yes, some people were saying they think they were read them too. Yes, now you're starting to question. Wait ka lang, huwag ka mag-alala. Hindi ko kayo iiwan nang hindi kayo um, kahit pa paano ay nalilid towards some form of resolution. Kasi si postmodern feminism mag tell you, honestly, okay lang yan lahat. You can be a little bit of all of it. But ultimately, what you have to recognize is there are roles that are expected. There are um, demonstrations, acceptable demonstrations of femininity and masculinity. And in the acceptable demonstrations of femininity and masculinity, you are subscribing to the unbalanced power that is putting acceptable masculine men at a higher level than acceptable feminine women. And then everyone else that doesn't fall into any of these two binaries are even less acceptable. So yun na yung parang lowest of the low. So that's how ang argument ng postmodern feminism is. This kind of identity, this kind of structure according to identity makes gender a big issue. Kasi even among the different kinds of men, there's a masculinity that is required to be accepted. Alpha male, kumbaga. So, ang shift natin from just women to gender is the recognition that these gender roles, these gender norms, are imbalanced even in the same category. And these, the way to break away from them is your fulfillment of your own sexuality according to your pleasures and desires um, and defining your own identity according to how you feel so compelled to be. And then finally, the last bit, intersectional feminism, gender and other social categories, um, sources of oppression. Like we said, the intersectional feminism, kanina may nagsabi na rin na medyo confusing kasi ang daming dynamics. But the basic requirement for intersectional feminism is recognizing the unique location that people occupy and then based on that location identify their different oppressors or oppression and then work towards 
providing them some form of relief or liberation. So, yun yung definition ng equity. So, it's not equality in the sense of liberal feminists na equal rights for all, but equity in the sense na one woman who myself lives in QC, have a ma I have a master's degree, my privileges and my pa who may be living with a disability, who may be living in a small rural town and may be required by her family to serve the family's interests more than her own. Diba? So in that case, yun yung appreciation ng intersectional feminism doon sa uniqueness of each struggle, uniqueness of each kind of oppression. So there we are. Um, some people are asking, um, they're leaning somewhat into intersectionality. Honestly, let's take time now. Um, to, so yung la next slide natin is we take a breather. Um, yes, being critical of your own feminism. So my question now is, and to wrap up a little bit, so we're starting to wrap up. I'm scanning through the chat. Um, yep. So being critical of your own feminism, recognizing that the fact that you acknowledge that you are a feminist means there are some privileges that you already enjoy. Right? Also, um, leaning towards intersectionality, Highlighting radical feminism, which is something that people forget. Great. So these are the different kinds of feminism. So let's wrap up and tie it all together. Um, let's take a breather. So for all of you, I can't see you, sayang. And this is my favorite part. Okay. I have references for people who want to research at the end. But wherever you are, wherever you're seated, if you're comfortable, just gently allow your eyes to close away from your screen. If you want to close it, go ahead and begin to breathe. So take three deep breaths, allowing your breath to flow in through your nostrils and take all the way down to your belly. And then allow the breath to float back up through the nostrils. So really allow your body to feel your own breathing. And then as you sit here, as you start feeling, hopefully, your body settling into the space and your mind settling in with your body, ask yourself where in your own body you can sense your own power. So let's take a few moments wherever it is in your own body that you can sense your own power. For some of us, it might not be instantly clear. So we might need to be scanning our own bodies. It would help to scan our own bodies with our breath. For some of us, it's also very distinct for us where the power comes from. So if you have found it, allow yourself really to immerse into that little corner or big space in your own bodies where you find your own power. So take another deep breath wherever you are, wherever you found your own power. And in the next in breath, allow your eyes to flutter open if they were closed. In the final slide, I leave you a question. So because people have already said there are some feminisms that appeal to them. And my suggestion, if you will allow me, my unsolicited advice, is for you to decide your own feminism based on all those chats. Based on the answer or your answer to this question, what kind of power do you want to lead with? And I would like to share some of the answers also that have been provided in the chat. So someone said they sense their power in their ability to bear children, which is very important. And someone in their own sexuality, 
which is also important. So thank you for sharing this insight. Um, my question about radical feminists being transphobic. Um, I think the word transphobic has to be unpacked. So radical feminists will argue that only biologically female people, because biology is a determination of gender, or biology is a determination of being a woman, and woman is oppression, diba? then women who are transgender don't experience the same oppression that women do. Diba? So that's the line that radical feminism draws. And it's also a line that our trans sisters and trans siblings, trans brothers, also draw is the unique experience of being a transgender person will only be known to them. So, yung question about whether radical feminists are transphobic is more a question about, well, what is transphobia, diba? So, if transphobia is refusing to acknowledge that trans women or trans men are people, then it doesn't really lie in just one kind of feminism, it lies in the person. So I just wanted to separate that, but of course, we are all free to dig deeper and we are all free to engage others and inspire others to critically think about their own beliefs. Um, yes, I forgot ecofeminism. There is ecofeminism, ecofeminism exists. And the idea behind ecofeminism is the whole um, life-giving power of Earth that is also being exploited by societies that are taking from it is a form of oppression. And that women's um, ties, women and the Earth, are tied based on this kind of exploitation. Um, what about the argument for that our trans community is being oppressed because they show femininity? I would. And then there's another one about pro-life feminists and pro-choice feminists. How do we tackle these kinds of feminism? So, ang daming kailangan ni unpack. So, I guess this is the hard part about chat. Kasi type natin yung words. Kasi yun pala kailangan pa natin i-define. Um, so, we've answered ecofeminism and the connection to nature and the world. Um, the argument that our trans community is being oppressed because they show feminism my usual response to this is how about we ask the trans community if they feel oppressed by using femininity because again once we move into this whole sense of how do we identify ourselves if the femininity gives us pleasure does that mean we're oppressed if your fulfillment of your femininity is the resistance that you have to mount against people who use femininity against you is that oppression or is that liberation? Diba? So I don't have, sorry, I don't have a clear answer, but it is a question that requires um, personal reflection. So I want us to start from there. Um, pro life feminists and pro choice feminists. Yes, that's possible that there could be pro life feminists, I guess. Diba? So may mga klase ng feminists na. Ang feminism lang nila ay hanggang sa level ng uh, maybe equal rights or maybe recognizing people's different positionalities, but draw the line at abortion and that is their religious convictions or moral convictions. And it's something that we also have to engage with. So, yes, yeah, so the thing with that is finally, before we engage in all these questions, and this is where I encourage everyone to really look inwards first and start from the position that you occupy. And then from there, begin to engage. Um, and with that, thank you for being, and thank you for all your diverse questions. I thought I might just ask Finn to show the uh, references. So for the people who still want to read. Um, and marami pa pong mga tanong, and I think this whole series of webinars will cover all of it. So thank you. Thank you, Sabrina. And then, uh, 
So for now, can we introduce someone from the Sanctuary Project? Dane, are you here? Hi, Dane. Yes, hello. Um, I'll be introducing the Sanctuary Project. Uh, I'm Dane. I'm from the Sanctuary Project UP Diliman chapter. So to give an official introduction, we are a university-based feminist organization that serves to support survivors of gender-based violence, hold perpetrators accountable, and provide safe spaces. Given that in the Philippines, most universities don't have an office that is dedicated towards handling these cases, they don't have policies also that aims to protect survivors. This is where the Sanctuary Project comes in. So currently, we have three university chapters. We have one in UP Diliman, we have one in the University of the East, and we have one in the Polytechnic University of the Philippines. So the project also aims to strengthen institutional and community response to university-based violence and how our graded violence still exists in society. So that's something that we really want to respond to. We also want to empower more students to be active agents for social justice and provide more opportunities for feminist education and advocacy organizing. So, of course, part of our main goal as well is to train our members and volunteers so they can be credible student responders because the project also aims to provide psychosocial services, legal assistance, and shelter. And this also in collaboration with professionals such as psych, uh, psychologists and lawyers. This also in collaboration with She Decides Philippines, uh, Center for Youth Advocacy and Networking, and the United Nations Population Fund, Philippines, and Student Council Alliance of the Philippines. So these are our partners for the Sanctuary Project. So thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to share our project and be in partnership with the Filipino Free Thinkers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dan. Um, okay, so sing it lang tayo. We have a survey. And so please visit bit.ly Feminist Fridays survey. And please, please answer the questions there so that we'll know what feminist issues are important to you. So we have five more workshops after this, tackling topics like soggy and intersectionality, uh, gender expectations, consent harassment and sex positivity, body autonomy, and other issues. Okay, can we have bands? Are you ready for your talk? Yeah, hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, Pepe Claudine is also here to do visual recording. Thank you, Pepe. Okay, let's start. Okay, um, just call me Bans pala. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I will be discussing a brief history of feminism. But actually, madami dun sa mga discuss ni teacher Ina kanina. Babalikan din natin or ma kailangan nating uh, alalahanin while we're discussing the brief history of feminism. So again, next slide. Okay, ayan. Sige. Um, before we start, um, Let's just do this activity of, of feminist issues. Uh, it's a word cloud. You can use the QR code or join by typing slido.com hashtag 77888. Uh, I want to know what gender or class or societal issues you are most passionate about. Ano yung mga issues na gusto nyong, uh, yung pinaka-focus nyo as an advocate, as a feminist, as an activist? Sige. Uh, baka, baka, Tin, baka you can also send the link. Ayan. Slido.com hashtag 77888 or you can use the QR code. Ayan. Para makita natin kung may mga similarities, ano yung mga most common. If gusto na, if balikan nga natin yung diniscuss na teacher Ina kanina, meron yan. And later on kasi, kaya na rin ito pinag-uusapan din. Later on, uh, makikita din natin how different waves of feminism, dahil din iba-iba ng era, ano yung situation, context during their time, iba-iba din yung mga 
parang focus nung mga pinaglalaban nila. Okay, so far we can ha uh, we have gender equality, Tina Hamadame ang nag uh, comment or nag-post ng answer na yon. Meron din teenage birth, poverty, marriage, childbearing, lack of education, bodily autonomy, violence, sexuality, body positivity, victim blaming. Ayan, o diba? Diba napakadami natin kailangang ipaglaban. Napakadami natin kailangang itama din, no? So, interesting how this also transformed through, through time. Makikita natin kung dati ito yung parang main focus, tapos nag-iba na din siya hanggang dun sa present time. Tingnan din natin later. Ano ba ang future ng feminism? Sige. Oh, meron din gender pay gap, sexual harassment, environment, healthcare, abortion, GBV, economic empowerment, Diba? They're all important. They're, and, yeah, patriarchy, reproductive choice. Okay. Ang galing. Ayan. Yung mga mas malalaki yung words, ibig sabihin, madaming mga nag-answer niyan. Nakakatuwa kasi nakaka-relate ako. Tapos, yan din yung nakikita natin parang current focus ng fourth wave of feminism. Ayan, diba? Sexism, stereotype, rape culture. Intersectionality. Okay. Sige. Tin, parang okay na, no? Naka-answer na sila. Okay. Dumadami pa. Ayan. Sige, later, i-unpack. Yeah, makikita din natin how this is all connected. Sige. Next slide. Ang next slide ata natin ay trivia. O, di ba? Madami tayong mga pa-activity. Ito, unahan makasagot sa comment section. Okay. Uh, itong mga trivia ay madidiscuss din sila dun sa, dis, uh, dun sa presentation later, pero itatanong ko lang, mahami mga nakakaalam. Ang premyo sa bawat makakasagot ay meron siyang sampung bantay bastos kit. Ang bantay bastos kit, it has a flashlight, a whistle, and a pen. Ginagamit namin to sa bantay bastos, pinamimigay namin siya para uh, protection natin. Kapag <laughs> pag lumalabas tayo ng gabi, ganon. Para din makapag-report tayo and so on. So, pwede ko itong ipadala sa inyo. Magde-trivia tayo. Ang first question ko, ano yung, what is the first country to allow women the right to vote? Pwede mong hula. Ah, tama siya. Si Liza. Liza said news. Mabilis naman. Mabilis <laughs> naman niya. Parang alam mo ata. Sige. Liza, tama. New Zealand. Um, sila ang first country to allow women the right to vote noong 1893. Uh, another trivia din, um, actually si Australia and si Canada, maaga din silang nakapa, nanalo ng, uh, ng right to vote of women. 1902 and 1917 respectively. But, uy, bawal nga ang Google ha. But, 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 1902 nga nakavote yung mga women of Australia and Canada. Pero alam nyo ba na yung mga women of color in their, in their country, were only allowed to vote in 1960. So, makikita mo din talaga yung, naalala nyo yung pinag-uusapan ni Ina kanina na intersectionality. Makikita mo yun na uh, dati, hindi pa kasi discussion yung uh, race. So, parang yung mga, women, yung mga white women, parang wait, dapat mauna kaming makaboto than, women, uh, than people of color. Parang gano'n. And, ang pinaka-last so far na hindi pa na, uh, ang hindi pa nakakakuha ng right to vote ang mga women, or kahit sino, hindi pa nakakaboto, ay Brunei, Brunei, and ang Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, 2011 lang sila nakapanalo nun. Ang next, okay, so Liza, later, message mo ako ng address at number mo para mapadala ko. Uh, next question, ano ang tawag sa spiritual and cultural leader ng pre-colonial era? Ano ang tawag? Tama si Lorna, Babaylan. Actually, tama din yung mga Katalonan kasi Babaylan uh, is a visa, uh, ang tawag sa mga sa Visayas. Katalonan sa mga Tagalog, mga Alisig sa Kalinga, mga Anito sa Pangasinan, Anitera sa Gadang, Baliana, Indicol, at madami pang iba. Makikita natin na madaming terms synonymous to Babaylan sa iba't ibang ethno-linguistic group. Mamaya natatalakay natin ng mahaba din yung um, kwento ng mga babaylan. So, asan siya? Yung nanalo. Message mo din ako ng... Lorna man din. Lorna, oo. 
Grabe, wait lang ha. Lima lang yung questions ko. Meron kayong tig sa sampo. Pwede nyo i-share. Next question. Medyo mahirap to. Anong year na-establish ang first birth control clinic? It's also the first uh, time na, kahit malapit lang, hindi kailangan exact. First birth control clinic. 1916. Bakit ang galing nyo? Tama si Shelo. Shelo, 1916. Ito yung um, birth control clinic na established ni Margaret Sanger. Uh, and eventually, in 1950, ito yung naging Planned Parenthood. Grabe, imagine ninyo, 1916 pa lang, pinag-uusapan na yung reproductive rights sa US. Tapos tayo, 2012, 2014 lang tayo nagkaroon ng... Uh, RH Law. Congratulations, Shelo. Meron kang 10 na bantay bastos. Cute. Grabe, di ba, Ina? Nakakalungkot. Yeah. Eto, madali to. Ano ang dalawang remaining states na illegal pa ang divorce? Dapat yung dalawa. Tama, si Queenie. Vatican City and the Philippines. Isipin nyo yun, napaka-religious ba nating bansa na tayo lang... <laughs> Tayo lang, aside from the Vatican. Okay, sige, Vatican John. <laughs> okay, tama si Queenie. Meron ka din. Please text me. Uh, send me yung number ko sa inyo para para ma-message nyo ako at papadala ko sa inyo. Last, eto. Ano ang pangalan ng legendary warrior princess na nagsabi na I will, own, I will marry only the man who can defeat me? Hindi simula. Wait, sabi niya. Uh, ah, Filipino to ah. Filipino. Legendary warrior princess from Pangasinan. Tama si Susan. Ah, ah, tama si Jomil. Pero tama yung spelling ni Susan. Si Princess Orduha. Actually, si Princess Orduha, hindi tayo sure kung kwento siya or totoo. But the mere fact na merong such story that exists in our... That's a lot nung sa... Faith and power of women during that time. Silang dalawa na lang. Sige. Si Jomil uh, and Susan. Ayan. Baka i-coordinate ko rin kay Christine yung prizes niyo. Congratulations. Sana mayroon pa tayo later. Sige. Hanap pa ako ng ano. <laughs> Paka Pakabog pa lang ng dibdib ko. Taas na sagot na. Ayan. Sana na-enjoy niyo yung game natin kahit sa comment section lang. Thank you. Ayan, sige, mag-move na tayo sa ating discussion. Congratulations to the winners. Oo nga naman, lugi yung mga ma mahirap, mahihirapan mag-type. Sige, next slide. Mag-discuss na tayo. Before we discuss yung history of Philippine feminism, um, siguro magba-background din muna tayo dun sa waves of feminism and history of, you know, Western and uh, yung feminism in the world. Um, Yung biology, yung biological determinism or bio biology taught us na men and women are not equal. So parang na-conclude na ng mga tao na men are greater than women. Parang sinasabi pa ati sa akin, actually ako na-experience ko to, that people are saying na, alam mo kasi talaga naman parang um, since birth, parang better naman talaga. Parang mas, ma mas malakas ang mga kalalakihan at matagal na, noong unang panahon pa, sila naman talaga yung mas may... Uh, hawak ng power, and so on. Pero sa discussion natin, makikita natin how um, this is not actually the case. No? Sige. Move na tayo sa waves of feminism. All throughout, um, actually, during the second wave, dun nila na-realize na may first wave, second wave, third wave, and actually, bago-bago lang na medyo discuss, hindi pa siya official, pero pinag-uusapan na yung fourth wave of feminism. Tinatawag siyang wave, I think, kasi may mga momentum. Tapos makikita nyo may mga gap yan. Eh. So parang 1830s to 1900s, tapos parang okay na ulit. Tapos meron ulit mangyayari na something big na kailangan, ma-realize ma ng women na wait, may kailangan tayong gawin. Tapos medyo may pause ulit, tapos meron ulit. Ganun. So nung first wave, of fe first wave of feminism, ang main focus talaga nila nung una, ay women's fight for equal contract and property rights. Kasi before 1830, hindi allowed ang mga women to own land. Um, tapos, eventually, nagkaroon na din ng parang wait, kailangan may makapag-participate politically ang mga kababaihan. Ito na yung suffer, uh, suffrage movement. 
So yung right to vote, right to education, better working conditions, marriage and property laws. Kasi parang dati, alam nyo ba, uh, ka, para magkaroon ka ng passport, you need to ask permission from your husband. Or parang parang dati, talaga pati yung kung ano yung mangyayari sa buhay mo at sa mga anak mo, kailangan mong ipaalam yan sa asawa mo. And, nabanggit ko nga kanina, noong 1916, nag-start na din yung birth control and reproductive rights discussion. So, yun yung first wave. Dito nga yung mga, sunod-sunod yan, nag-start sa New Zealand, US, Australia, tayo sa Philippines, later mag-discuss din yan, kasi 1937 naman tayo. So, yun yung first wave. Actually, madami yung mga second wave, third wave, we feel na yung first wave nga, medyo racist pa yung, medyo racist daw sila. Kasi nga, parang wait, ha? 18... Dito sa latter part ng 1800, um, nagkakaroon na din ng discussion na dapat uh, black men should vote. Kasi hindi matanggap ng mga middle class white women na mauuna nga silang magkaroon ng right to vote. Kaya wala pa, siyang, wala pa siyang lens ng kahit anong intersectionality, race, and so on. Ayun, pero may mga nagsabi din. Actually, yung isang nga nagsabi, maganda tong sinabi niya na the suffrage was the right that once a woman had won it, would secure to her all others. Kasi dito na nag-start eh, di ba? Parang if you got the right to vote, parang tuloy-tuloy na yan. Madami ka nang pwede pang mapaglaban, gano'n. Uh, okay. Uh, tapos, nag-move naman tayo sa second wave. Ang second wave naman, parang mas binroaden niya yung debate. Actually, yung second wave, nagsimula yan dahil kay feminist mystique, and the second sex, uh, mga reading, refer uh, reading materials to. Si Betty Friedan, yung feminist mystique niya, actually got so popular na in three years, nagkaroon siya ng, nakapagbenta siya ng three million copies of her book. Tapos it was passed on to friends, sisters, ganon. Pero very middle class uh, white woman issue pa din siya. Na wait, I should not be the second sex. Hindi dapat ako parang based lang sa bahay, hindi pwedeng magtrabaho, I also have, parang mas ganun yung focus niya, di ba? So, ang mga issues ng second wave feminist are workplace, sexuality, family and reproductive rights, ganun. Um, pero again, hindi pa din kasama yung uh, race and other uh, intersectionalities and identities. Dito din nagsimula yung idea, or familiar ba kayo dun sa term na, o oh, sige, uh, isa pang game. Uh, familiar ba kayo dun sa term na the personal is political? Sige. Uh, baka may pwedeng mag-define ng personal is political sa, ano, sa message. Magkakaroon ulit siya ng price. Go! Ayan. Uh, popularized by Carol Hanisch. Um, yun. Ang, ang sinasabi kasi ng personal political, yung mga na-experience natin as a person, um, actually, systematic, uh, systemic at societal problem siya. Na parang lahat pala ng women ay experience siya, ganun. Uh, the problems that seem to be individual and petty about sex, relationships, and access to abortion, domestic labor, were actually systemic, political, and fundamental to the fight for women's equality. Yun, dyan nagsimula yan. Kaya parang personal is political, political is personal. Um, ang mga issues nga ay sexism, patriarchy, GBV, domestic abuse, workplace inequality, and so on. Tapos sila din yung medyo ajit. Parang yung idea nga na hindi, uh, ah, sila yung mga nag sa Miss Universe pageant and Miss America. Tapos kaya meron yung um, medyo, medyo, syempre nice tayo sa mga secondary feminists. So sila yung ano, uh, may, alam nyo ba yung bra burning fiction? Kasi parang, Ganun nga na paint yung second wave feminism na galit sila, parang ayaw nila nag-shave. Uh, ayaw nila nag-shave, ayaw nila ng bra. So sinunog daw nila yung bra. Although hindi naman yung totoo. Hindi naman nila talaga uh, binurn yung bra. Pero dun sa rally nila for Miss America, nag-throw away sila ng mga ganun, Playboy magazine bra. Tapos parang na, ano na lang na nagsunog sila ng bra. Pero hindi talag myth yun, myth. So yun nga, influenced by by Simone de Beauvoir and Betty Friedan. Pero yun, parang medyo dito nagsimula na pang pumangit yung image ng feminist. Kasi yun nga, yung angry, bitter women, parang ganun yung pinortray sa feminism. Kaya, si third wave feminism, tinatry niya tong i-correct. 
Um, ang dito na nag-start yung idea of intersectionality, diversity, identity, gender, race, um, social order, soji, uh, media portrayals, and so on. So, yes, backlash against feminism. That's correct. So, si third wave feminism, intellectually influenced siya by Judith Butler, yung postmodernism, uh, postmodern feminism na discuss ni Ina kanina. Tapos naman, sa aesthetics, yung mga riot girl, bikini kill, yung mga, ano ba, mas sa uh, music and art scene, na, yun nga, parang women can wear high heels, be beautiful, and still fight for women's rights, parang ganun. Uh, madaming progress from uh, the first wave, second wave, pero may mga pinaglalaban pa din, ideas about womanhood, gender, sexuality, ayun nga. Yun, yun yung third wave. And then sa fourth wave of feminism, ito yung mga pag-uusapan pa natin. Mas, kumbaga, pinagsama-sama pa din yung mga issues from first, second, and third wave. Pero ito na yung very influenced by the online platform. Um, halos lahat ng mga campaign, hindi lang naman sila nangyayari online, pero nakakonceive sila online. Hashtag feminisms, the Me Too movement, issues about misogyny, um sexual harassment, the rape culture, parang dito pa lang na-introduce yung mga ganon na pinagalaban. Tapos medyo may sensitive din yung, hindi naman sensitive, parang may issue din na yung mga second wave feminists, hindi nila masyadong gusto yung ginagawa ng mga fourth wave feminists. So parang, you're too sexy to be an activist, parang may mga ganon, yes, iha ako, kasama yon. Hmm... Meron din, not, not just that, kasama din yung uh, pag-seek ng political office and leadership roles. Kasama na din yan sa fourth wave feminism. Dito din natin makikita na women are start up. Women started to speak up um, dun sa mga men in power who are misogynists. Ganon. Sige. So, yan yung para medyo um, Ano lang, preview lang ng first, second, third, and fourth wave feminism all over the world. It's happening. So later, babalikan natin si fourth wave feminism. Sige, next slide. Okay. Uh, close you. I want you, uh, this time, gusto ko sana pumikit lang muna tayong lahat. And imagine a feminist society na egalitarian. Um, sige, siguro kahit mga 15 seconds lang. Kahit 15 seconds lang. Imagine natin. Um, kung ang society natin ngayon ay feminist, pantay-pantay, egalitarian, uh, what do you see? If, if you would try to imagine ano ang itsura ng... Ha, huh, 10 more minutes na lang ako. Okay, sige. Mura ang diva ka. Piso-piso lang. <laughs> sige. Sige, siguro parang uh, pantay, di ba, ang men and women... May mga karapatan ng uh, hindi walang difference, gano'n, oh, we, we can coexist, tama. Tapos, parang yung mga dami natin pinag... Uh, kanina tinanong ko yung mga feminist issues nyo, di ba? Madami tayong mga kailangan pang itama, kailangan ipaglaban, na parang it seems so impossible na maka-achieve ng egalitarian. But actually, before, pantay-pantay naman. So, tignan natin if possible ba talaga yon Next slide. Ano ba, paano ba nung pre-colonial era? Pre-colonial era, so ito yung before 1521, na wala pa yung mga colonizers, wala pa yung mga Spaniards, di ba? So, sinasabi nila dati na yung feminism is so Western, ganun, parang nakukuha lang daw natin abroad um, sa mga ideas na napapanood natin. But actually, even before, kahit wala pa yung term na feminism, uh, it exists naman. So, next slide. Dati, uh, ah, tandaan din natin kung bakit Bakit ba wala tayong masyado nababasa about um, sa history, about women, about feminism? It's because it's because history is written by men. So, yung lens nila, para, uh, yung lens, wala naman silang gender lens, tapos sa kanilang lens yon. Tapos, they think, pareho lang yung experiences natin. So, they just write about the men uh, men's experience. When in fact, magkaiba naman yung experiences ng women and men. Next slide. So, ito na. Nung pre-colonial era, actually, women in a number of selected uh, ethno-linguistic group held a higher position, a, a respected position. So, uh, dahil yung, econo uh, dahil yung uh, social order of native communities ay self-sufficient, agri uh, econo economies, um, walang women had rights and freedoms, some of which today's 
women do not have. Kasi before, women were regarded as men's equal. Uh, we are eligible to be to become the chief of the community. We can, uh, our children can uh, bear our name. We have the right to the family property and lineage. We were free to choose our spouse uh, and to divorce them if necessary. Family was not just patricentric, but also matricentric too. Uh, women, when they were married, they can also clo stay close to their family, as did men. Uh, bakit? Bakit ganito? Kasi yung situation noon, um, family is the basic production unit of production. Ang land, river, and sea ay owned by all. Uh, walang private property. So, pantay-pantay, entire community was in involved in producing the basic necessities of life. Um... There is no marked division of labor among male and female kasi lahat contribute, lahat nagtutulungan. So everyone could fish and hunt, everyone could plow land, and domestic work is done by all. So if you can do all of this during that time and you live before 1521, you're, a, you're probably a pre-colonial Filipina. Ang galing, no? Sana, sana ganun before, di ba? Sana hanggang ngayon ganun. Pero anong nangyari? So, dati, egalitarian, walang div gender division of labor. Women were present in all productive work. Uh, no clear limits kasi ng public and private. Kaya hindi kailangan yung division of labor. And women were political leaders of tribe. Uh, okay, next slide. Colonial era. Uh, and women were not in the power of men, sufficient yung opportunity, and so on. No colonial era, pagdating ng mga uh, colonizers natin na Spaniards, nakita nila na, wait, bakit walang gender division of labor? Nakita nila yun agad sa pronoun. Kasi, bakit ang noun and pronoun sa Filipino hindi gendered? And that says a lot about the culture, di ba? Kasi wala, hindi naman nila nakikita yung importance na kailangan magkaiba. So, syempre, to establish your power, kailangan nila tong ibahin. Parang iniba tuloy nila. So, one, nag-introduce sila ng cultural, technological, religious and social, uh, nagkaroon ng shift. Uh, Siyempre, pinilit nila yung sa kanila, nag-wrestle sila, sila for political power. Yung mga dating datu na head, napalitan ng king, governor general, and military friars. So, parang mas nag -follow, naging followers na lang tayo. So, technological aspect, pati yung agriculture, pinalitan nila yon. And dun sa beliefs naman, yung dati natin na babaylan na mediator ni God and the people, wala na, they uh, demonized it na parang bruha. Bruha na yung mga tawag sa mga babaylan. Sinunog nila lahat ng symbols of worship. Uh, Spanish priests and missionaries insisted on the hegemony of Western doctrine. So nawala na yung power ng mga kababaihan. Nawala na yung power ng mga babaylan. Inintroduce na yung private property. Dito na yung mga hasyenda na pagmamayari ng mga uh, priest So dito na nag-start na Women are now uh, at the bottom of the hierarchy. Ang head na niya ay si God. Tapos after ni God, ang priest, ang gobernador Silio, ang landlord. Tapos yung tatay niya, yung asawa niya. So ano nangyari sa mga kababaihan? Sila yung mga naging pambayad utang incurred by the father or the husband. Um, women suffered effects of small wars kasi parang yung mga lalaki kailangan dalhin sa military. Ang mga babae, kailangan sila yung magtrabaho sa farm, sa production, naging silang sigareras. Um, women no longer had a central role in the field of culture, uh, no longer led rituals, priests, naging na lang silang healers, pero pati nga yun, tinawag na silang uh, bruha. This didn't change until women involved themselves in, themselves in national movement for independence in the last half of the 18th century. Dito na yung uh, next slide. Dito na yung 20 women of Malolos, um, meaningful education for women. Ito na si Asosasyon Feminista Filipina and Asosasyon Feminista Ilonga and yung equal political rights, suffragist or women's right to vote noong April 30, 1937. Yan na yung mga nakuha natin. But kahit na-achieve natin ito, anong nangyari? We are still regarded at the, as the second sex. We can work, but we get lower pay than men, and have more fields we can explore, but they are still dominated by men. We can still we can, we can now vote, which is a, a huge win. Pero 
equality is still a distant vision. We are still poorer and more oppressed than men. Sige, so yun nga, may mga wage income disparity and madami pang iba. So, martial law period na tayo. Ah, so yan, makikita nyo lang. Sige, next slide. Uh, makikita nyo lang dyan yung pagkakaiba ng pre-colonial, colonial, and post-colonial. So, martial law era, era na tayo. So, nung martial law, next slide please. So, the struggle for women's rights became more vigorous because of martial law, madaming atrocities, salam natin yan, mga human rights violations. So, ang mga women, kasama naman sila sa mga nationalist and revolutionary movement. So, dito nagsimula na mayroon, sige, ah, eto, tingnan nyo lang yung mga nakasulat dyan. We are still regarded as a second sex, lower pay, but we are now under a dictatorship. So, bakit para pa rin tayo nasa past, walang nangyari kahit nasa, kahit ilang years na yung nakaraan. Sige, next slide. Dito na nag-start yung mga women's organizations. Uh, discuss ko muna yung mga, uh, tapos post-EDSA, um, dito naman nagkaroon ng major divide in the women's movement. May mga women who were comfortable calling themselves um, feminists. Meron naman na women activists yung tawag. Dito din nagkaroon ng mga civil society organizations. And madami din tayong mga napanalong laws post-EDSA. Sige, later kasi babalikan ko pala yung mga organizations. But next slide. Uh, present day. Ngayon naman, nabanggit ko rin to kanina, may mga new platforms and forms, new forms and platforms na ang feminism. Um, new issues are opening up for exploration, including positive sexuality. Nakita ko to sa mga Pinoso kayo na, and bodily autonomy. Um, current immediate issues center on misogyny, authoritarianism, sexism, and much of the past advocacies remain the same. Uh, yun nga lang, we are still living under a corrupt and violent dictatorship. We can vote and be educated and actually have two female presidents, but we still get poorer and more oppressed than men. And... Are we still? Are we now confused? Why this still sounds a lot like the past, de ba? Parang na kalungkot. Pero sa gaba piyawan lang natin yung mga women's organizations naman sa Pilipinas. Next slide. Ayan. So no 1970s during the martial law era, dito nagsimula. Actually 1969 si Makibaka and 1975 si Kabapa. So si Makibaka saw the need to integrate women's concerns into the broad national concerns of the movement. They tried to define the dynamics of class oppression and gender inequality. Pero dito kasi kaya hindi din siya, medyo maagad siyang na-stop dahil hindi, parang mas nag-focus pa din sa national movement than the feminist issues. Okay, tapos noong 1980s, dito na naman nag-start yung mga feminist organizations na mas socialist feminists. Kasama dito ang Pilipina, kalayaan na kasama na talaga yung mga gender issues, reproductive rights, and so on. And then in the 1990s, dito na nga yung dumami talaga yung mga CSOs. Imagine, noong 1970s na 12 lang ang women's organizations. Noong 1990s and late 1980s, umabot na yan ng 200. Dito din nagkaroon yung um, pag-unite ng mga women's organizations, yung G10 and WAND, na nag-combine into 200 women's groups. Ayan. Nag-start na din dyan ang mga likhaan, uh, reproductive health, uh, gender. Dito na nag-start yung mga ganong discussion. Actually, 19, late 1980s lang na simulan sa Pilipinas yung pagdidiscuss ng gender. Dati, women's issues lang. Sige, next slide. Ayan, makikita nyo lang dito yung timeline of the Philippine feminist movement. Kasama dyan yung mga first senator, first president, the laws, 1975, nagkaroon ng NCRFW. Kasama yung mga different laws we uh, won. Next slide, kasunod pa din. Hanggang, although hanggang 2013 lang to, of course, we know um, noong 2017, we also have the Safe Spaces Law. Ayan, 2012 pa lang yung RH sa atin. Sige, next slide. Uh, I also have the reading reference, uh, reading materials. Galing ko, oh, syempre hindi naman po ako pinanganap noong time na yon So, galing ko lang din po siya sa mga kwento at nabasa natin. Medyo kulang lang tayo sa oras. So, um, before I, I, I close na, um, I just want to ask then, what what do you see? Uh... Uh, Bans, 
Later okay. na natin gawin yan sa Slido. Ay, okay. Sige. Sorry. Okay, sige. Salamat. Ay, lang yung, uh, ano nakikita niyong future of our feminism. Yes. Sure. So, everyone, pakiisip na kung ano yung sasagot ninyo later. Uh, uh, tanong na ko na lang din ngayon para later sagutin nila. So, this is us. Sabi ko, fourth wave, uh, new platforms. What is happening now? Pag-isipan nyo. And what will our legacy be? Yun lamang po. Maraming salamat. Thank you, Bans. So, yung next ay uh, critical thinking. I'll be giving the talk on that. Sandali lang. So, marami tayong nakitang mga different issues ng feminism, no? Um, dati, nung panahon na yon, yung mga tao naman nun, tingin nila, uh, they were doing good. Like, na it was good to keep women at home, to care for the family. That's what they thought. So, what's the difference with now? Now, there's more evidence. There's more perspectives that we can see. There's more studies. But women need equal rights. Now, there's also the internet. But the internet has a lot of fake news, conspiracy theories, and influencers that sometimes give out wrong information. So in this, in this present, how will you know what is true? The answer today is critical thinking. So I'm not here to tell you what to think. We want you to decide for yourself what's right for you. So when you're given a claim, maybe somebody talks to you, somebody tells you something, or maybe you see something online, you should ask why. Always ask why when you're given a claim. So first, check, is it a personal claim that they're giving you, or is it a truth claim? If it's a personal claim, then you don't need so much scrutiny on it. But if it's a truth claim where they claim that this is a truth for lots of people or for everyone, then it needs more scrutiny. So now we have an activity. So for this, we need to define what is a statement of fact or what is a statement of opinion. A statement of fact, although right now in this reality, we can't prove it yet. But a statement of fact can be verified or can be easily verified. A statement of opinion, however, is harder to verify. It's usually subjective or based on personal perception. So let's just start a poll. So which of these statements are fact statements or statements of opinion for you? So the statements there are, one, men are smarter than women. Two, men and women should have equal rights. Three, Lenny Robredo said that women are great. Four, there are more female billionaires than male billionaires. Five, liars are the worst people to be in a relationship with. Six, in a survey of 100 women, 50 said that they were happy being the head of the family. Seven, by 2040, the world will be a more gender fluid place. Number eight, Titanic is a better love story than Twilight. Number nine, legislators should consider decriminalizing abortion because around three women die every day due to complications from unsafe abortions. Ten, Philippine legislators consider themselves to be good at critical thinking. So what are your answers? Okay, half of you have voted. What about the other half? Okay, uh, 53 of you have answered and let's share the results. So number one, people said it's an opinion. Yes, that's right. Number two, Men and women should have equal rights. We agree, but it is an opinion. It's harder to prove this. That's why it's an, a statement of opinion. Number three, Danny Robredo said that women are great. That's a fact. Because it's easily verifiable if, let's say, you, you look at her interview that she actually said this statement. 
Number four, there are more female billionaires than male billionaires. That's also a fact. Um, because you can easily see statistics for this. Number five, liars are the worst people to be in a relationship with. That's an opinion. So you got it right. Most of you got it right. Um, because it's very hard to explain or to, to verify what the worst people to be in a relationship with is. Number six, in a survey of 100 women, 50 said that they were happy being the head of the family. That's a fact because it's a specific survey that it's talking about, so it's easy to verify that. Number seven, by 2040, the world will be a more gender fluid place. So most of you got it right. It's an opinion because we can't prove it yet. It's not 2040 yet. So that's for now, that's an opinion. Number eight, Titanic is a better love story than Twilight. Yes, that is definitely an opinion. Number nine, legislators should consider decriminalizing abortion because around three women die every day due to complications from unsafe abortions. So this one is, is um, weird in the sense that it's both a fact, a statement of fact and a statement of opinion. So the fact here is that three women die every day due to complications from unsafe abortions. You can easily verify that from stati statistics. But the opinion here is that legislators should consider doing it. Number 10, Philippine legislators consider themselves to be good at critical thinking. That is a fact. It can be tested. Uh, you can actually ask themselves if, if they consider themselves to be good at critical thinking. It doesn't have to be true. But it's true that they do consider themselves to be good at critical thinking. Thank you, everyone, for participating. So let's go on to the next slide. So for every claim that you're given, you should first look at the assumptions and the reasons and the evidence that they give you and if it's even connected to the claim that it's trying to prove in the first place. You shouldn't stop if the evidence seems acceptable already for you. The, the time that you know when to stop is if it's already irrefutable. If you can't find any other way to disprove a claim, then that's when you can accept it as something that's true. So for example, when people say it is the duty of every woman to be a mother, Sometimes people give you the evidence that because the Bible or my religion said so. This is, this has an assumption that the Bible says the ultimate truth, but that's not, that's not, that's not a statement of fact. Like we, we don't know if the Bible contains the ultimate truth. Or sometimes they give you the evidence that most happy women are mothers. But when they say this, this is anecdotal information. And they don't really know if most happy women are mothers. So when, when you look at the assumptions of a claim, the first thing that's common is that people take for granted that they have the same meanings for terms. Sometimes people end up arguing for long periods of time and then they find out that in the first place, they didn't have the same the same understanding of the terms that they were using or the words that they were using. And also, assumptions are claims. So you should also evaluate these like claims. So ask why. And then when, when it comes to evidence, again, like I said earlier, you need to check if there's even a connection between the evidence and the claim that they're trying to prove. So for example, one of the most common things that people give uh, as evidence is that their religion says so, or that it's tradition, or that it's history, or that it's popular opinion, that everyone believes it, why can't you? So this is not necessarily true. This is not like something that has been happening before, doesn't have to keep on happening now. We have new evidence, new studies all the time, data, comes up all the time. And if, if it's disproven, then 
maybe we can re reconsider our beliefs. Uh, other things, other evidence that people usually give are statistics, data, and studies. So again, you should check first if it's even connected to the claim. And if, even if they give you proper studies, you should check, is it published reputably? Is it peer reviewed? Or is the sample size and methodology acceptable? Next, you should be aware of logical fallacies. This is so that you can easily spot if somebody says a claim that is untrue. There are some common logical fallacies here. So for example, uh, anecdotal evidence, they give that all the time. Uh, ap appeal to tradition also is what I mentioned earlier. Or bandwagon, like if a lot of people believe it, so should you. Or circular reasoning. The, if the evidence being presented is based on the claim that it's supposed to prove, it doesn't make any sense. So other, other logical fallacies here are confirmation bias and cherry picking. And it also helps if you know your personal and cultural biases. So these don't have to be necessarily uh, consequential to your actions, but sometimes they are. But if you're aware of your biases, you know how to, how to stop yourself from leaning towards something and giving judgment before you check out all of the evidence or all of the arguments. So some examples of personal or cultural biases are, let's say when people say women don't know how to drive or women are more caring or that men are lazy. So these are biases of different kinds of people. You should also know of cognitive biases. These are biases that are based on natural human behavior. Some people have, some experts have revealed that, that human beings are more prone to believe in certain things if they are, if certain ways of saying them are done. So be aware of the cognitive biases that you're more susceptible to so, so that you can avoid them. Here are some examples of them. So for example, the bandwagon effect. If your friends believe a certain idea, you're also more likely to, be, to believe it. It, it. It's not so hard for you to believe or to accept something that most of your friends already believe. Or for example, the halo effect. If you see a person as having a positive trait, that positive impression will spill over into their other traits. It can also happen if you have a bad impression of someone. If you think someone is bad, then you think that they can only do bad things. Or for example, anchoring. It's the same amount of water, but because you were presented with a different kind of glass, you see it as half full or full. It's, it's really perception. So after you've analyzed all of these claims and you've decided for yourself, but maybe you're still not sure, what do you do after? So here are some suggestions. You could research some more. You don't have to rely on what they give you, on the evidence that they give you. You can research by yourself. There are always new studies out there. You can look at their methodologies. You can look at the new data out there. You can also check other perspectives. So this is a good exercise for everyone to try and see from someone else's point of view. Someone from a different economical background maybe, or someone from a different, someone with a different gender. You can also talk to your friends or talk to other people who have other opinions. Uh, but still, you don't have to accept what they say as the truth, again, they're making claims and that you can also evaluate this, these claims. And lastly, it's okay to reevaluate your beliefs. We grow, we learn. And as new evidence pops up, we can always reevaluate our beliefs and see if it still works for us or not. Thank you. So have you guys prepared your question and answer questions for the speakers? So can you put them on the 
the chat. So can I invite our speakers to come up and turn on their video? Hi. Hi. Oh, kanina pala may question on can, me, can men be feminist? Actually, iba-iba yung stand ng mga feminist friends ko dun eh. Merong mga nagsasabi. Ako, ako, I personally believe, pwede naman. Uh, pero merong mga nagsasabi na hanggang ano ba ang next to feminism? Parang Parang may mga hindi nag-a-agree. Pero ako, ikaw ba, Ina? Ako, I think men can be feminists. Saksyo ako. Mm. Oh, sa akin, I would prefer for men to be feminists. Yeah. Um, yung, yung, yung kind of feminism kasi na sinasubscribe ko, hindi masyadong exclusive. Yeah. So, the more the men, the merrier. <laughs> yung aking pinaniniwalaan. Pero, ang requirement doon, syempre, nag-soul search na sila. Oo. Diba? Dumaan na sila doon sa introspection, ano yung levels of privileges na meron sila, and nag-decide na sila ano exactly yung kind of oppression and ano exactly yung ideas nila for liberating everybody from unfair gender relations. So yeah, yeah, mukhang na maraming nag-a-agree na men can be feminists and that men need to be included in the conversation. Um, okay lang ba kung mag-add uh, lang ako ng konti yes, sure. on that question? I think it's a great question. Um, I definitely welcome, personally, I welcome men as comrades in the feminist movement. Um, but I also think it's important, parang gusto ko rin, kagaya ng sinasabi ni Ina kanina, I think it's important to unpack where that question comes from. Uh, parang ano ba yung, bakit natin, bakit tayo nagsisik ng parang uh, definite, or parang way to include versus exclude people from feminism? Parang ano yung purpose nun? What do we seek to achieve by that? Uh, does that, parang kumbaga, are we trying to, to define who can be a feminist and who cannot um, para ma-decide natin kung sino yung pwedeng sumali sa feminist activities or feminist groups like this? Um, or and, and what effect does that have? So parang for me, important rin i-question yung in the first place, saan nanggagaling yung... Uh, we, we, and we see it all the time, not just with men, di ba? Parang saan nanggagaling yung impulse to declare or define um, yung pang de, eto, eto yung criteria para masabi na feminist ka. Um, parang it's almost like we're sc parang screening committee ba tayo? <laughs> At nag naghahanap ba tayo ng applicants para sa position of feminist? <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think it's, uh, it's important to ask ourselves uh, ano yung um, reason behind or reasons behind these questions um someone in the chat uh, mentioned there is a group called men engage where they teach men about basic feminism um you may also some of you may also have heard of um yung usapang lalaki um kasi uh, I, I if i'm not mistaken they are a group of men uh, or people who identify as men uh, who uh hold discussions about um, gender issues, among other things, uh, na facilitated by men. Um, and so, I think na merong, sa spaces na ganito, pwedeng i-explore uh, ng mga lalaki yung positions nila on the different gender issues we've been discussing and uh, whether or not they identify as feminists. Uh, okay, so merong mga magandang points rin na na-raise uh, dito sa chat. Uh, sabi ni James, I think mainam na kaisa sa paglaban sa mga struggle ng mga oppressed, yung mga tao na hindi nakakaranas dito. So yung konsepto na tinatawag sa social movements, yung konsepto ng allies, ba? Uh, ally as in kakampi, um, it recognizes the idea that even if you're not part of an oppressed group or you're not part of a marginalized group, you can be very effective uh, in resisting and standing up against injustice. I 
kay Tin ko pala na-send you. <laughs> dapat, dapat to everyone. Yeah. Yung concept ng allies. Uh, si Anja uh, pointed out that men can be feminist, but they should know how or when to stand back in the movement. For example, men should take away privileges of their own and take a step backward to give space for women to speak up for themselves and to be feminist. Uh, I think that Um, many of us uh, would agree with that or resonate with that na uh, parang yung isang uh, concern when it comes to having, to involving allies in social movements is to make sure that they do not co-opt the social movement na parang parang they turn the discussion back into, or sila na naman yung nagiging center. Parang. Yeah, uh, gusto ko lang din i-bring up no na kaya kaya din namin ginawa yung women's group ng FF even if um, free for everyone naman yung main group no because some women are not as used to speaking up in a in a room full of men or like in a in an all gender setting. So parang training ground na rin for women for more women to speak up to learn more about feminist issues in a safe space. Because some women are also scared of, I mean, they, they, they might have had trauma before. So, yeah. So, it's also important to provide safe spaces. Uh, and we also have several people in the chat who are pointing out na uh, men are also oppressed. Men and boys are also oppressed by patriarchy. Um, and uh, yung recognition ng oppression na yun, uh, can be one of, parang a powerful a uh, source of yung motivation nila to become part of the feminist movement. Um, and uh, Price mentioned, there's a tweet that says something along the lines of, I don't need men to be allies. I need them to be traitors to the system that privileges them. Yung concept ng gender traitors, uh, race traitors, uh, yung idea na when you are a member of a privileged group, uh, you should actively parang betray <laughs> yung group na kinabibilangan mo para ma-dismantle yung privilege na na-enjoy mo. Uh, I feel like Vance was uh, parang agreeing with yung uh, points that were raised. Oo, shocks. Nakalimutan ko na yung sasabihin ko. Pero ganun nga, parang, pero ako, ay, ayun pala, naalala ko na. Um, na Naiintindihan ko yung medyo uh, challenging din yung, kasi yung oppression din natin, they, they need to understand their privilege and so on. Pero at the very least, we need to start talking about masculinity and we need to start involving them. At yun. Meron din pala ako naisip, uh, lalo na dun sa, kasi lahat tayo nakaka-experience ng some form of discrimination and oppression. So, yun yung parang baseline. That's what patriarchy does. That's what capitalism does. Based yung... Uh, yung idea na... Sorry. And then... Ah, hindi. Okay lang. <laughs> uh, napapansin ko to, and I think it's important to flag it for this discussion rin. Yung behavior na nag... So, compare tayo ng oppression, tapos nagsasabi tayo na may isang uri ng oppression na mas matimbang kaysa sa iba. I think... As myself, as a feminist, what I'm trying to do is avoid yung comparison ng gravity. Kasi the gravity depends, again, on the person who experiences the oppression. Kaya nga mahalaga yung perspective ng intersectional feminism. Kaya mahalaga yung recognition na multiple sources of oppression contribute to gender, unequal gender power relations. Um, I think we have to stand back kapag ang sinasabi na natin ay may mas matimbang na oppression, may mas mahalagang oppression na dapat isolve. Yun. Yun lang. Again, with my feminism na include all together. Ganyan. Yeah. Pero yun. Actually, yung next na episode natin, yung next na workshop natin is about uh, soggy and uh, gender, uh, sorry, uh, intersectionalities. So, doon natin pag-uusapan where it all connects. Okay. Uh, meron akong gustong i-bring uh, up na question that was raised or point that was raised in the Facebook Live. So, hindi siya, uh, wala siya dito sa, sa ating Zoom uh, session. Pero nag, 
uh, raised siya ng question. So, si Dino dun sa Facebook Live said, there's too many conditions for feminism. Can we just agree that it's just and beneficial to treat each human being equally, regardless of race, gender, social status, etc.? So, parang... Siguro dahil parang ang daming na bring up na things to think about, things to unpack, things to reflect on. Uh, parang kailangan ba talaga to? Hindi, hindi nga ba simple naman na usapin yung uh, pag-stand for equality? May mga nagsasabi nga nun na actually, feminism is like humanism. Parang it's, you know, just basic human decency. Be nice to everyone. Don't be an asshole. That's feminism. Parang basically ganun naman talaga siya, di ba? Pero kailangan mo lang talaga ma-establish na feminism. Kasi yung, yung ano, uh, interwoven uh, oppression of women and other marginalized. Yeah. Um, sa mga pub- publicity materials actually natin, nakasulat na feminism aims to break stereotypes and achieve equality and justice for for all genders. Dagdagan ko rin yung sabi ni Van na parang dapat feminism is humanism also because if you remember, patriarchy prescribed certain behaviors that are acceptable. Patriarchy prescribed certain demonstrations of power that are acceptable and will consolidate power to a few. So, ito na yung iba't ibang uri ng kailangan malakas ka magsalita to command the room. ba? So, kung babae ka, out ka agad. Yung ganun, when we can achieve a good conversation na naghihintay tayo ng turn, tapos nakikinig tayo sa iba't ibang pinag-uusapan, and then nagsasalita ng malumanay, ba? Which is not masculine demonstration of power. So, yun. Kaya yeah, definitely, parang feminism, humanism, parang, oh, ganun yeah. talaga eh. We're the best. Very <laughs> <laughs> mga comments about, like, being nice to everyone. Kasi kailangan mo din, parang kaya hindi siya equality lang. Parang it has to be gender transformative. Kailangan mo din ma-understand na right now, ma- merong... Uh, disparity ng power, may imbalance, kaya kailangan mo din iangat yung mga kababaihan para ma-achieve yung uh, gender transformative world. Right. So, I think yung isang comment sa chat uh, from Joji, uh, yung sinasabi niya na yung the problem with the idea of let's all just be nice to each other is that it glosses over institutionalized discrimination na we're not starting from uh, parang a blank slate. Meron ng pre-existing na systems of oppression uh, and being nice to each other while it's a good thing, of course, is not enough para i-change yung mga existing systems and conditions na yun. Uh, I also want to bring up uh, something... Okay. Uh, yeah? Sorry, wait lang. Sige lang. Maya, wait lang. Um, pwede ba from our speakers, like sandaling uh, explanation lang ng equality versus justice? Hmm. Okay. Um, so, go back. yung binanggit ko din kanina kasi na kaya justice, meron nga kasing meron kang kailangan baguhin. Parang kasi kapag equality, hindi mo naman pwede sabihin, oh, pantay na ha, pareho na kayo ng sweldo. Kasi di ba ganun yung equality. Kailangan, naalala nyo yung sikat na infographic meme or sort na, oh, bibigyan ko kayo ng parehong upuan. Kasi, di ba, yun yung equal. O, oh, ito yung pagkain nyo. Actually, it's, it's a, yung iba-iba sila ng height and merong may disability. Tapos, binigyan sila ng parang uupo, tatayuan nila. If you can remember that image na, o, oh, equality is, bibigyan ko ng isa-isa, di ba? That's equal. Pero, when it's justice and equity, you have to understand na yung circumstances, yung identity, yung experiences of people are different na may, some are more privileged. Kaya, kailangan mo siyang ipantay. Kaya kailangan mong bigyan yung ibang tao ng more kasi sila yung more oppressed at sila yung mas may, may pinangangailangan. May, mas may pangangailangan. Doon dun sa mga privilege na. So yung eventually nga, nun maganda nga nag-evolve yung meme na yun eh. Kasi dati equality, pantay-pantay, tapos iniba-iba ng height. Tapos yung next na uh, nag-transform yung meme na yun to um, clear na lang yung barrier ay yung 
imbis na may wall, ginawa siyang screen, and then eventually, you know, just remove that screen. Para pantay-pantay talaga lahat. Yep. Dagdag ko lang din. So, yung effort nung justice is to recognize not just yung different opportunities and abilities na meron sa bawat isa or sa bawat category, social category, socioeconomic category. But also recognizing na yung mismong playing field, yung mismong environment, yung mismong society is lopsided. So, and justice means making what's lopsided, not not just access to the platform, but making the platform accommodate everybody and sharing the resources in that manner, sharing the opportunities in that manner. Um, meron din palang nagtanong sa si Liza, tinanong niya kung bakit daw tayo nagpo-focus on all genders instead of just women. Kasi gender power relation, yung gusto rin natin buwagin, part siya ng evolution ng feminism eh. Kasi originally, feminism was just thinking about women. Kasi mas mat mas 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 nakaka-capture ng social imagination yung disparities between men and women until such time na nag-evolve nag yung discourse to the point na the unequal power relations aren't exactly as clearly defined as men and women because men and women categories are not clearly defined either diba so dito na papasok din yung OG which we will we will get next Friday but just the idea that gender is not defined solely by the categories of men and women. So, if that were the case and gender relations exist based on these different kinds of definitions of gender identity, which is where we're going, nagiging gender na. So, yun. Uh, kasi idagdag ko na lang din na bukod din sa acknowledging the power relations and power imbalance, kasama na din yung uh, different identities kapag gender, hindi na lang women. So yung intersectionality. At saka yung favorite pa na favorite ko, yung part ng okay. pleasure and sexuality and um, desire. Kasi pagka women, yung original construction ng discourse about women was just that women were oppressed. But it's so morbid to think that what makes a woman is solely their oppression, diba? Yo yun. Sige. Salamat, uh, salamat Ina, salamat Bans. Thank you din sa mga questions. Um, let's finish with yung future of feminism. So I'll, I'll, I'll open Slido. So please go to Slido again and enter your room code 77888. Tapos ilagay ninyo, ano yung mga naisipan ninyong future of feminism kanina? Yes, divorce! Meron pa bang iba? Uh, just go to slido.com and enter the room code 77888. You can also use the QR code. You can just uh, try to take a photo using your phone. Oh, there. Maya sent the link. Thank you, Maya. Yay. Equal pay. Safer spaces, safer homes. Yes. Actually, sa survey natin, tinatanong natin kung saan nakakaranas ng harassment yung mga tao. Equality, equal pay. Yes, nakikita ko yung abortion. Free from discrimination. No cat calling. May mga nagugustuhan ba kayong terms dyan? Nina, Vance? Oo oh, nga eh. 
Lahat. Oo nga. Ang saya, di ba? Imagine. Ang kakanda. Yung woman na si President's cautionary tale lang si GMP. <laughs> Oo. Like, not all women leaders would so, be feminist. It's good to remember that. Gusto ko lang din pasalamatan yung sign language interpreter natin. Kids, thank you very much. Sorry kung napagod ka. <laughs> oh. Thank you din kay Pepe or Claudine for doing the live visual recording for this session. So later, can you all turn on your video so that we can take a photo, a group photo for everyone? You can also unmute yourselves now if you want to say the future of feminism and what it looks like for you. Hello, Christine. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining us today. We, we see here ano yung mga current focus and advocacies of the people in our group. Kanina umabot tayo ng 89 or more? Umabot tayo ng 90 something. And then may mga 20 or so na nasa Facebook Live. Ang ganda ng mga feminista. Shared care work. Ako, ano, isa yun sa mga, ano ko, uh, gusto ko ding ipag-focus na at focus. Ano yun? Shared care work. It should be oh, free. Yes. Yes, we should have communities. Right? Empathy. Okay. Paper streets. Healthy discourse is important. Kaya important yung critical thinking. Saka din din sa discourse, yung walang isang voice na nagdo-dominate or walang isang idea na nagdo-dominate. It's a very feminist perspective, di ba? Meron akong gusto dito, no more bras! <laughs> Oo, oh, ako hindi na nagawa. work from home! Uncomfortable niya. Although okay lang naman if people want to wear bras. Pero ako uncomfortable talaga ako. And we should, people should be okay to say that, huh? Can I say something? Since nag-ECQ, because we all have to wear masks in public, feeling ko masafe ako na maglakad na walang bra kasi hindi na nila nakikita yung mukha ko. Yes, oh, yes. So, 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 may nag-raise din sa akin na medyo mas mahirap na ma-identify yung perpetrator kasi naka-mask na siya. Mm. Kaya oh. minsan ginagamit din nila mga ano, plate number ng sasakyan, ganun. Kasi halos takip na yung mukha ngayon, di ba? Yeah. Thank you, Ma'am Dorai Bukoy. Happy Young Feminists carrying on the work. Yes, Happy. thanks for attending. Normalize no bras. Free the nipple. Yes. Actually, matagal na ako hindi nagbabra. Tapos parang ngayon ko lang nakikita yung mga tao na nag out na hindi sila nagbabra ngayong pandemic kasi nasa bahay lang. Tapos yes! Oh my God, I'm so happy. <laughs> Nakamahal kaya yung bra? Oo, di ba? Saka ako talaga, ang pinaka-issue ko sa kanya, it's uncomfortable. Parang, hindi ko alam. Okay, andito na yata tayo. Yung mga gustong magpakita sa ano. Posing kayo kung gusto nyo. Wait lang. Papakita din ako. Ayan. Hello! Salamat for coming. Wait, itatanggalin ko na rin yung live stream. Bye!